Hello and welcome to tutorial 96 in this series of tutorials and programs that focus on TradeStation Easy Language. If you're not part of our email list, then please go to markplex.com and uh, I'll keep you up to date when I create new programs or tutorials. So tutorial 96 is a simple demonstration of using the Excel workbook tool. In other words, being able to link a spreadsheet with TradeStation and either get information from the spreadsheet or put information into the spreadsheet. And in this case, we're doing both. What we've got is we've got a symbol and uh, the symbol I've got is the pound dollar. And then what I'm doing here is just having the program update the bid and ask prices in these two columns. I've got the program applied to um, a chart which is not the pound dollar but uh, and it's also the five minute that minute but that doesn't really matter in this case um, i'm also if you're a gold pass member you also might be interested that i've created a training there which instead of just using one symbol we've got a great uh, long list of symbols so programs doing basically the same thing but in that program we obviously have some mechanism of bringing in a number of symbols and storing the quotes providers in a vector and we're using quote provider incidentally to provide the bid ask price so clearly I've already got a program written here which is uh, which is working what, what I'm going to do is just start from scratch and uh, first thing I'm going to do is just turn this program off so that uh, we can go ahead and switch on the, the next program when we've done it. So let's go to the TDE and let's go to the program we're going to create. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to just double click on the workbook here and uh, you'll see that that appears. I'm going to select it, I'm going to go to properties. It's going to give it a slightly more easy name so I'm just going to call it WB and then the file name is something which we're going to be inputting as an input. So what I'm going to do is click the input. It's going to ask me, do I want to create a file name? And I do. And I know what my Excel spreadsheet is called. I've already created that. So I'm just going to paste that in while I'm about it. Now, the other thing we need is a quotes provider. So I'm going to double click on that. Again, click on properties. I'm going to give it a slightly easier name, just, just QP. And uh, symbol is something that we're going to get from the uh, spreadsheet. So uh, what I'm going to do here at the moment is just put in symbol. But so uh, we're going to be actually getting that from the spreadsheet. And then we're going to be looking for two fields, the bid and the ask. So we're just going to type those in like so. Uh, local time zone. And uh, we're going to need an update event. I'm going to need to know when the quotes provider is updated so I'm just going to double click there and you'll see we get a um, update event. Okay so that's the basics and that has in the background created some designer generated code. So what I'm going to do now is go into that designer generated code by going view designer generated code. I'm going to just drag my mouse over all of that code and control C. I'm going to go back to my program and I'm going to copy it into the program like so. Now it's just tabbed in one more time than I want it to be so I'm going to press shift tab and just going to tidy things up a little bit. The first thing we need to do is just delete these objects from the bottom of the screen and uh, because we've copied the code for them into our main program now and Another thing I want to do is because this is using the full qualified namespace or whatever here, I'm just going to go to the top of my program and I'm going to put in those namespaces, which will just make our code look a lot simpler. So I'm just going to use the syntax using then the name of the namespace. And that means that what I can now do is delete that there. In fact, let me just remove this. Uh, Okay, so that's the first one, and uh, what I also can do is the same thing for this information here. And again, we're just going to say using no semicolon or anything like so. So let me just verify the program so far. 
just to make sure we haven't made any slip ups. Now I'm actually going to be putting this into a once statement. So I'm just going to replace that with once. And it's going to tidy this up or just at least remove some of the the um, comments like so. And I'm just going to put this QP ahead of the QP like so. And uh, again, we can remove, we don't need to say new EL system office Excel because we've we've specified the namespace and neither we need, do we need all of that we can just remove and just say new quotes provider okay so so far so good let me just again remove some of these comments you don't need to do that if you find them helpful just want to keep this as uh, absolutely simple as possible now I mentioned that we're going to be taking the symbol name from the spreadsheet we know that that is in the particular uh, place on the spreadsheet. So what I'm going to do is just remove that for the moment and I'm going to show you how we access the information on the spreadsheet. So we're going to go the name of the workbook WB. The syntax is now we need to tell it what sheet and the sheet is actually just the default. So sheet 1 like so. Square bracket. Then we press the uh, the period key and we get some um, options there. I'm going to choose cells as string because this is a symbol name and I'm going to tell it the cell based on as you can see the column and the row and we know it's in that particular position. Okay so that is so far so good I think. Let's just verify it. Now the Quotes providers do take a finite time to load. So what we need to do now is just add a little bit of syntax to make sure that we know when they are loaded. So to do that, I'm going to create a new input called QP loaded or a new variable called QP loaded. This is going to be an intra bar persist variable. It's going to be a Boolean and I'm going to call it QP loaded. I'm going to set it to false by default like so. And uh, what I'm going to do now at the bottom here is say while QP loaded equals false begin and end And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to say QP loaded is true. In other words, it's going to be true unless we prove otherwise. So I'm going to say if QP, and we want to count the number of things in the quotes provider. Now, as you know, we're trying to find both the bid and the ask. So we can use count and we're saying if that is not equal to two, in other words, those two things are not loaded, then QP loaded. equals false and the while loop will continue. Now if it is true, in other words they are loaded, then what we can do is load the initial values onto into the spreadsheet. So we can do else begin end and the syntax for putting something into the spreadsheet is the name of the workbook WB and then square brackets quotes sheet one. We need to put in the place we want it to go into and this is going to go into the second column first row and then that is going to be equal to QP dot and the syntax is we want a quote so let's find that and the first quote we want is the bid so we're going to put that in double quotes, square brackets, and we need to tell it that it is a double value, which is right there. And I'm going to just copy that because the next statement is almost identical, apart from this time we're using a different column. It's going to be column three, 
and instead of the bid we're going to be import, putting in the ask like so so that is the initialization let me just verify this to make sure that we've not made any mistakes so far so that looks good now one of the things we're going to do now is we're going to be looking for the quotes provider to be updated and going to need a variable in here you'll see in a moment so I'll just put that in while we're here I'm going to call it column now incidentally in methods you need to absolutely say it's an integer or whatever it is and you don't put any default value at the end so it's going to look like that now we need to know why the up the uh, uh, quotes provider has been updated and we can find that out by going args dot reason and uh, if you don't know what that means you can right click it say definition of args reason you will get some helpful information coming up if you click on quote quotes update or rather quote update reason you'll see there are two possibilities initial update real-time update we're interested in real-time update which is zero so I'm going to say if args reason equals zero then begin end and Okay, we, we, this could be giving us a bid value or an ask value, so we need to establish that. So we go for args dot, then the uh, the thing is field equals bid. Then we're going to set the column to be equal to two. Uh, else, the column is going to be equal to three, like so. Having done that, we can now put the value into the sheet. So again, the syntax like lower down. In fact, we just yeah, I've already got that. I can just paste that in. Um, so this time, the column is going to be determined by this this value col, C O L, like so. And then the actual value. Let me just remove this. Is args dot. Then we want to find quote, and we want to set it to be double value or tell the uh, okay so that should be good let me verify it okay and there's just one final thing that I want to do with this program and that is when we de-initialize this program we want it to close the workbook so to do that I'm just going to click anywhere on the sheet I'm going to click here I'm going to double click and you'll see that we've got some uh, a new method appearing and I'm just going to put in the syntax which is w b dot close and then we also need to have after that two round brackets and that will work fine uh, what you might want to do again what we need to do here is just make sure that we have this method actually after the the variables so I'm just gonna cut that there move that down to there and then just uh, remove a few lines there so you can see the uh, the variables and the input together followed by the method so let's just see if that verifies yes it does and uh, if we wish to we could also go and look at the designer generator code and just again copy that giant designer generator code and we could add that to the program like so we could just uh, tab that in a bit and just remove some of this some of these comments just to make the uh, program you probably want to have some comments in here if you're doing this uh, for real because so you know what everything's doing but if we do do that if we do copy the designer generated code then we need to go ahead and just remove that there okay let's just try and verify again 
Okay, so as I mentioned, this is already actually applied to this chart. I'm just going to change the status to on. So 96B status on. Should see an Excel workbook opening. I'm just going to click on that. And then if you just compare, as we see here, these figures here, um, 53476, and we should begin to see these figures uh, adjusting as the program updates the values. So anyway, I hope you might find this program useful. I will make uh, a download available if you want to save yourself some typing. And also, as I said before, if you're a Gold Pass member, I'm going to make a more sophisticated version of this program available on the Gold Pass site. So thank you very much.